All right, YouTube, Stocks by the Numbers, welcome back. Today, I wanted to take a look at a company that kind of threw me for a loop because uh, it's been climbing with Bitcoin as of late, as we see this big rally here through October, November, as Bitcoin began climbing. However, overall, in my opinion, the business has actually gotten weaker, not stronger. The name of the company I'm talking about is Coinbase Global, ticker symbol C-O-I-N, listed here on the NASDAQ. Stock right now about 155 and a half, down four points, a little over two and a half percent here on the day. We have, first off, a potential little bear flagging that is uh, potentially forming here. I know we had, uh, you know, some gaps down, and if we want to draw a trend line across, we could potentially say we had a shoulder and a head and a shoulder, so we had an inverse head and shoulder, so that helped along with the rise in Bitcoin as well. However, if we come down, if we look at the actual numbers of the stock, in my opinion, this company is heavily overinflated. We have a market cap now north of 37 billion, the company losing about three and a quarter dollars per share for some reason. I mean, they basically just kind of sit there and make transactional fees off of uh, people's Coinbase wallets when they do transactions with crypto. So the fact that the revenue has fallen off a cliff, but somehow the stock is still being held up and rewarded, kind of is blowing my mind. If we look at annual revenue, as we see here, as of 2022, the company posted about $3.2 in annual revenue, right? So if we compare that here to this number, now we can see that the, the current valuation here at 155, after coming down from these uh, high 180 levels that it hit uh, just about two weeks ago, we can see that the stock right now is trading at about 12 times 2022 annual revenue. Now, granted, if we look recently, the company has had some success uh, when it comes to the earnings side, right? If we see here on the EPS, somehow, some way, the company is absolutely destroying these EPS estimates. But the problem is, if we go back to when the company formed, let's look at this revenue here. Look at this. We go public. 1.8 billion for the quarter. 2 billion. Look at these numbers here. 1.3 billion. Almost 2.5 billion. Then we start slipping down to 1.1. 1, 1. Look, now we're less than 1 billion. Now we're less than 600 million. Slightly above 600 million. But you see, look at the estimates. See how the estimates completely fell off a cliff as well? 870 million, 639 million. Now down to sub 600 million, and the company beats that by roughly 7%. Then we go the next quarter, and they lowballed the estimates again to 655 million. The company comes out, posts a great quarter here on the revenue side, 772 million. Phenomenal rebound, right? So now you'd think the next earnings quarter. The, the estimates would be even higher, right? And you can see they drop down by, uh, you know, 28 million or whatever it is. Estimates of only 627 million. The company posts almost 708 million, beating those estimates by almost 13%. So then you'd think, all right, now the earnings, you know, the, the estimates should be at least 700 million. No, back down to 650 million, and the company posts 674, beating by three and a half. My apologies, steam friend there. But it just makes me laugh how sometimes, you know, we look at a lot of these stocks and it'll be amazing how you'll look at EPS and revenue estimates and somehow the company will like just miss or just beat. But here with Coinbase, you know, we're just getting these low ball uh, revenue estimates and also I assume EPS estimates as well. I mean, if we look here, look. On a loss of 145, the company only posted a loss of 34 cents. So you would think that the next quarter EPS estimates would be higher, but they actually go lower. As you see, EPS estimates down to minus 76 cents, they post a loss of only 42 cents, absolutely annihilating these two estimates. So now you have to assume after posting minus 34 and minus 42, that, you know, you would be, the estimates would be you know, around like uh, minus 10 cents or something like that. But as we see, estimates were minus 55 cents, the company trending upward with their profitability. But again, the estimates aren't reflecting that. And the company happens to post a loss of only one cent, beating EPS estimates again by a wide margin now for three quarters in a row. And of course, if we go back here, you know, to, to before these low balls, in my opinion, took place, you can see the company only beat on the EPS side by about two and a half percent. And then we jump up to 76 percent, 44 percent, 98 percent. So, you know, this is a company that, in my opinion, the analysts are actually potentially trying to help out. 
and kind of help it rebound. Uh, because going from $1.8, $2.5 billion in revenue a quarter, bringing estimates all the way down to, you know, six and a quarter, $650 million, I mean, in my opinion, that's a joke. And the problem here that I'm seeing is that the company climbed here. And again, I know that markets were rallying, so everything kind of got brought up. I can appreciate that. But again, the problem is, it, it seems like everyone's kind of tying this to Bitcoin. And in my opinion, it absolutely should not be tied to Bitcoin, as crazy as that sounds. Now, I know you're going to say, well, wait a minute, there's a crypto wallet. This is where I buy my Bitcoin. How are you telling me it shouldn't move with Bitcoin? Well, it's very simple. I believe I looked, I tried to look, I'll, I'll say, I tried to look for how many Bitcoin Coinbase personally is holding. And I could not really find that number for some reason. However, I saw a report saying that you know, now a chunk of all of Bitcoin in the world is being held in Coinbase wallets. Okay, excellent. The problem is, them having the Bitcoin in the wallets is not their Bitcoin. That's what I think a lot of people are forgetting, right? When we look at the Bitcoin miners, when we look at uh, stocks like Mara, CleanSpark, right? We knew quote unquote, you know, supposedly, of course, it's all hindsight, but you know what I'm saying? We kind of knew that those companies would climb when Bitcoin climbed, right? Because they're the ones mining it, they're actually accumulating it, and then they're probably selling it off for a higher price, right? So they're making more and more money the higher Bitcoin goes. So that makes sense. This rally in Coinbase, though, actually kind of threw me for a loop. Because again, they only make money off of transactional fees. And even if you want to say, no, no, they're, they're holding some Bitcoin, you know, so they made money as Bitcoin went high. Okay, fine. But also at the same time, you know, what are we talking about? H half a billion dollars, maybe? That they made, you know, a couple of hundred million, even if you want to call it a billion. Like, what did they really make during this run on Bitcoin? And remember, they technically would have only made money off of Bitcoin if they sold their Bitcoin for a profit. So the, the real concern here is that the amount of transactional fees, the revenue generated from the actual business, has been decreasing. And we can see where the company came from here. About half a billion in revenue. We move into 2020. One and a quarter billion, we'll call it. 2021, 7.84 billion. And then they post less than half of that here, 319 for 2022. And if we switch over here to uh, 2023, we can add up these three uh, quarters real quick. We're looking at, uh, what, maybe like 1.45 billion, right? And now that'll bring us up to maybe like 2.1 billion. And now what's next quarter estimates? 786. Now all of a sudden the estimate is, is you know, significantly higher. Now it's up to 786, right? So that, that's what makes me laugh. Over the last three quarters, they helped the stock out, so to speak, as, as I mentioned before, with, in my opinion, very low ball estimates on both the EPS and the revenue side. And of course, the stock went from low 50s, high 40s, up to uh, $189 a share, whatever the hell it hit recently, right? So Coinbase went on a massive run and it's just not translating to me, in my opinion, on the business. Because now, again, these three quarters, we said, what, about $2.1 And even if they bring this in, you're looking at 2.8 to $2.9 billion. But if we come back to these numbers, now we're seeing a decrease again in year-over-year -year revenue. So that, that's what's throwing me for a loop. The, the stock is being rewarded based on the rally in Bitcoin. However, the transactions on its actual platform for Bitcoin and, of course, other crypto as well, is apparently decreasing. And you probably know what I'm going to say because, again, the numbers don't lie and it's kind of supporting my hypothesis here because, again, when the company went public back here, and you can see, again, 1.8, 2.2 billion, look, 1.3 billion, back up to 2.5 billion. This is throughout 2021 into 2022. And again, what took place? The stimulus money came in. 
right? So a lot of these young people, they took their money, they immediately opened up a Coinbase account, or they added the funds to the Coinbase account. They bought more crypto. They, they had now more cash on hand, so they were able to run trades, right? So they were probably trading crypto consistently. And who benefits from all those trades? Coinbase, because they charge a transactional fee every time you run a trade. Now the revenue falls off a cliff going from a high of two and a half billion per quarter. Now they're barely doing two and a half billion for the year. Yet for some reason, the stock is being rewarded. And in my opinion, it is really just not adding up. Because if you really think about it, even if they're holding five, 10% of all worldwide Bitcoin in their Coinbase wallets, again, that is not their Bitcoin. That is your Bitcoin. And they only make money off of your Bitcoin when you elect to sell your Bitcoin. And because Bitcoin has been rallying, I'm assuming anyone who has been involved in Bitcoin over the last couple of months or the last year or so, chances are you are holding Bitcoin in anticipation of an, an even more intense rally for Bitcoin. So if everyone's mostly holding their Bitcoin and not selling it here after it just ran then the company is obviously making less money. I mean, you know, that, that's just simple logic and common sense. But now looking at it on paper here in the numbers, again, even if they're holding a couple of hundred million in Bitcoin, and I know I think they have like five and a half billion in cash, but now, the, again, the revenue is down less than three billion for the year. I mean, you know, you, you add all that up, you're talking about what, like, like eight billion? We could say we could we could say eight billion, and again, um, uh, yeah, you know, we're talking about uh now if we look at it that way, uh, you're looking at what maybe like four and a half times that total value, if we if we combine total revenue and cash on hand, again, that's about eight billion. So they're trading about four and a half times that number, right? However, a couple of things, right? We know that we're seeing the dollar consistently kind of lose value over time, right? Because they have to consistently keep printing it. So the fact that they've been holding five plus billion on their balance sheet for several quarters, you know, now instead of five and a half billion, it might translate really to like five billion buying power, quote unquote. You, you understand what I'm saying? So it, it's kind of throwing me for a loop that they're not doing anything with their cash, uh, again, the revenue, the annual revenue has completely fallen off a cliff, yet the stock is being held up and the company was rewarded during a Bitcoin rally. And let's look at these estimates here. We can see now moving forward into 2024, they're expecting much, much higher revenue here into the 800 millions and eventually back above into the 900 millions. But again, coming from where the company was, I mean, you're telling me here to, to close out 21 you posted two and a half billion in that quarter. Now we fast forward three years later and, and you're only doing, you know, 900 million in change for the quarter. So revenue is down significantly. Yet again, the stock is being rewarded. And look at this. Look at these annual estimates. For 2023, 2.9 billion, right? We ran the numbers before. They might post right around that number. So this may be uh, the first annual revenue miss for the company since it went public here in 2023. Of course, we have to wait for those earnings to come out. But look at what happens moving forward. 3.44 billion, 332248. So what you're telling me is basically when the company went public was its best year. And it's only going to get worse for the most part. Or we'll say plateau, okay? Let, let's not say it's going to get worse. Let's just say it plateaus. And as we see... Three, four, four billion. That's less than half that. So the overall business itself is now expected to generate less than half revenue from the heights. And apparently it's going to do that consistently for the next two, three, four years in a row. Yet the company is being maintained with this $37 billion market cap. And I'm not saying that, you know, the, that tech isn't the hot sector and 
again, you know, not to bring politics into it, but again, if you go back to the Obama years, as I mentioned, a lot of stocks, a lot of uh, American brand name companies kind of stagnated, and the one sector that shined was technology. And as we see now under the Biden administration, uh, you're kind of seeing the same exact thing. Like, yes, the Dow and the S&P, of course, have rebounded, but overall, again, the, the sole winner is the tech sector. And and again, in my opinion, I kind of knew that was going to happen. And I appreciate the fact some people say, oh, you got to keep politics out of trading. And I can appreciate that. However, of course, they are connected. But, you know, overall, looking at this company, I'm, I'm not seeing it. I'm not seeing it. Again, you know, we, we had big misses and big negative EPS here. And then all of a sudden they turn a corner and all of a sudden they're annihilating these, these estimates here on the revenue side. And same, you know, same thing back here again, they were, they were missing consistently and, and then they began, <clears throat> excuse me, and then they began to U-turn and kind of turn it around. And then all of a sudden, again, these, uh, these low ball estimates were coming in. I mean, look at this. We're talking about one, two, three, four, five quarters in a row where we're talking about mid to low 600 millions at one point, an estimate of even below 600 million. So that that's why, in my opinion, I think they just lowered these numbers down to kind of try to help the stock out. And here we can see the company looking to go EPS positive here in 2024, but then back to EPS negative in 25, and then significantly falling even lower back down in 2026. <clears throat> so overall, in my opinion, I'm really not understanding the uh, the hype behind this situation. And again, if we switch over here, look at the cash. <clears throat> Excuse me. Look at the cash here. Now, I appreciate the fact here, looking at these last three quarters here for 2023, we can see, look at the free cash flow, the green bar in the middle. You can see minus 21.6 million, then goes positive, 159 million, then even further up, 361 million. So that's why the company, I, I can appreciate the fact the company, it, they are doing a couple of things right. The debt has been, was kind of holding that three, five billion mark for several quarters. Now it's down to about three and a quarter billion. And the cash and equivalents, again, 5.4 billion, 5.3, 5.35, 5.5. 5.53 billion. So this is what I'm saying. The company is holding a couple of billion dollars in cash, but they're losing billions of dollars a year from, from the actual business that they used to have. So, so that, uh, that's why, again, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm just really personally not understanding what is going on with this stock and why it is being rewarded. The equity again was up to six and a half billion, drops down to about five and a half billion, has been slowly rebounding. Book value down here at about twenty four and three quarters. You can see it was twenty nine and a third. Right? So the book value is down like twenty percent in change over the last eighteen months. Yet the stock is being rewarded. And again, this is technically not a Bitcoin miner. And, and again, even if they're holding Bitcoin, and let's say Bitcoin rallies 10, 15%, and, you know, that they made four or five hundred million dollars, that, that doesn't justify a $37 billion market cap, in my opinion. I'm just not understanding it. This is almost like Robin Hood all over again. These people, they start up these platforms. You literally sit there, wait for other people to trade. You make free money, but yet somehow the money isn't consistent. And, you know, there are losses across the board. I'm, I'm just, I don't know. It's just not adding up to me at all. The return on assets, as we see, was positive and then drops down negative. It has slowly been climbing up. You know, I mean, I have to give credit where credit's due. Return on equity was north of 50%, drops down to almost minus 50%. Now it's been slowly climbing for the last couple of quarters. Return on invested capital, same thing, 37.5%, drops down to minus 28%, slowly been climbing for the last couple of quarters. 
The gross margin percentage has increased over quarter over quarter, looking at last quarter here, jumping up to about 81 and a third. However, a couple of quarters back, it was up to 87 and a half. And look at the operating margin percentage. Was minus 29 and a half, drops all the way down to minus 90 percent. Slowly climbs up, explodes up to 5.6%, and then just completely falls off a cliff back down to minus 11, now minus 28.5%, right? And then remember, I always bring up PayPal. I will, I will never forget PayPal. They dropped PayPal off a cliff from around $70 and change to new lows of 50 because their operating margin missed consensus estimates by 0.6%. And look at the swing we see here in a, in a stock like Coinbase, yet the stock was climbing. I'm sorry, I'm not understanding it. EBITDA, earnings before interest, taxes, depreciation, amortization. As we see here, was minus 26%, drops all the way down to minus 81.8%. Slowly rebounds, just like the operating margin. Explodes to positive 12.5%, and then again reverses and drops and falls off a cliff. Minus 2.7%, currently sitting at about minus 23 and a third percent. The profitability, as we showed, miraculously made a phenomenal rebound, and now they're absolutely blowing a low ball EPS estimates out of the water, and now the company's sitting here with a net margin percentage of only about minus a third of a percent. But again, you know, where there are positives, in my opinion, I just think overall there are more negatives. Asset turnover just completely dropped down, as you see here, was up to 0.46, drops down to 0.10, slowly over time. Now we're sitting at 0.02. Debt to assets has gone down. Debt to equity kind of just maintaining this like 0.55 to 0.6 range. I don't know. Me, personally, I'm not seeing anything too crazy. Because as we always say, in my opinion anyway, when we're talking about an investment, not a trade, right? Any of you who got into, like, coin calls at sub-100 and you rolled the wave, I'm, I'm not talking about you. And I'm sure you can appreciate that. What, what I'm talking about is the actual investment itself, right? Think about if Coca-Cola. Imagine you bought shares of Coca-Cola. And all of a sudden, they post for 2023, oh yeah, by the way, revenue went down 50%. What do you think is going to happen to the price of the stock? I mean, let's be serious. But again, these future forecasts don't make any sense, in my opinion, for the current valuation. So, again, we're assuming, I don't even know what they're assuming, right? I mean, they're assuming what? No new people are opening Coinbase wallets, but they're expecting Bitcoin to continue to climb and get back above 50K. And then what? They're assuming that people are going to start selling, so they're going to start generating more and more money. Unless they mention that they're planning to increase fees, so, uh, again, that's why stocks will sometimes get a little bit of a bump when these companies announce, you know, uh, service fee increases or product price increases. But what they're not understanding is that now you're charging more money to actually less customers. And if you think about it, we're seeing it kind of with a stock like Apple, right? Revenue dropped down because what are, they, what are they doing? Now they're raising their prices when, in my opinion, they're already significantly way too high, but they raise their prices, right? Because Apple products have become like a status symbol. It's not necessarily, you know, the best product you can buy, or, you know, or, or it's not necessarily blowing its competitors out of the water. People just look at Apple as a status symbol, right? Uh, practically everyone has a smartphone, but if you have an iPhone, you know, people put you like that one step higher. A lot of people could go out and buy a laptop, but if you have a MacBook Air that you paid whatever, $2,800 for, whatever the hell the prices are, I haven't looked, honestly. But, 
You, you understand what I'm saying? Oh, you had the money to buy that extra expensive Apple product? Oh, okay, you're, you're one step higher than everyone else. So something like Apple now, we're seeing revenue dip down because what they did was they increased prices. And now the people who were like, I don't want to say addicted, but let's just say committed and loyal to purchasing Apple products, right? Those consistent customers are now paying even more, but the traffic and the quantity of items purchased is actually going down. And, and again, we, we find this all across the board, really, if you think about it. I said the same thing about McDonald's, in my opinion. Right? McDonald's is like maintaining and consistently slowly increasing their revenue, but the prices have gotten out of control. And believe me, I'm not the only one who's saying this. You can go on YouTube right now. You will find a lot of videos, a lot of shorts about people calling out McDonald's saying that they used to have the value menu, the dollar menu. It used to be the cheapest option. Now it's one of the more expensive options. It's essentially in line or even more expensive than a lot of its other fast food competitors. But McDonald's is somehow maintaining that business. So what does that mean? That means now that they increase prices to the customers that are loyal or could be addicted to McDonald's food, right? So they're consistently paying more and more week in, week out. However, the number of actual customers has decreased because now you've outpriced the consumer in a lot of these cases, right? So now they're making more money off of less people. And in my opinion, that is a recipe for disaster, especially when we specifically talk about a company like uh, like McDonald's, right? I mean, they're, they're, they were always known for the volume, good deals and big volume. And now it's big prices on lower volume, right? So now you completely flip the script of your entire business model. And unfortunately, it was probably 110% done to appease shareholders, in my opinion. But hey, you know, okay, I'm going off on a tangent. But again, what we're seeing here, look at this. Now, three years later, and we are doing less than half of the revenue that we used to do in a quarter. So regardless of whether you think Bitcoin's going to go higher or Coinbase is going to be around for a while, right? That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about the actual business itself has fallen off a cliff. And here, in these markets that can literally swing at any time, again, we went on a massive rally November, December, and I said, in my opinion, now after rallying for seven, eight straight weeks, you're now dampering the January effect, where supposedly more volume, more funds would be coming into the market. A lot of these fund managers are now repositioning their capital into newer and different, more fundamentally sound positions. And usually we see a bump in market value throughout January. But what we're seeing here is predominantly red days because we just ran for eight straight weeks for no reason, in my opinion. Some positive data comes out. You want to run the market for a week or two? All right, fine. Yeah, okay, fine. Eight straight weeks, I think we had what, like one or two red days over the last two months at the tail end of the year? Uh, that, you go back throughout history, that's almost impossible. You almost never see a run like that. Because we all know markets fluctuate. They go up and they go down. And when they only go up, then we get to a point where even... If we consider stocks undervalued, or even if we get positive data, we simply cannot go higher without kind of like breaking the whole system. You, you know what I'm saying? So now we have to come back down to earth regardless of any freaking positivity that might come out. And this is what I was afraid of. That's why, in my opinion, I was calling for puts and a sell-off throughout December, even after we were running. Because, I, again, I understand all the technicals were pointing to continued bullish momentum, but this is why, in my opinion, I was kind of pleading with the market to not continue to go higher because now the ball dropped and we have been down, not up. But anyway, went off on a massive tangent there. But again, just try to consider looking at these numbers here. Again, I'm just looking at, you know, annual and quarter revenue here, kind of just putting two and two together, in my opinion. But again, I want you to really think about that. Imagine Hershey. Next year, revenue drops 40, 50% year over year. The stock would get decimated. 
So why is Coinbase being rewarded? Because Bitcoin's up? I mean, listen, I appreciate the fact they're semi-connected and, you know, you could push that narrative. But again, let's be honest here. Even if they're making a couple of hundred million off their Bitcoin, their revenue is down significantly. And right here is all you need to know, Steam friend, my apologies. Right here is all you need to know. Retail investors, that is their bread and butter. And as you see, in 2021, it accounted for almost $6.5 billion of annual revenue. Not too shabby. Fast forward to 2022, that number is down roughly 66%, two-thirds down to less than two and a quarter billion. And I know what you're going to say. Oh, well, look, they beat the stock up. Look, we brought it all the way down to 30. You know, it, it got beaten up. Yeah. Yeah, I, I see that. And in my opinion, it should have gotten beaten up. And also, it should have stayed down there. But we have these market pumps, and it actually helps out companies that shouldn't be helped out. You can see it had the bounce as the ball dropped, right? Stocks came in hot when, when the ball dropped uh, this time last year in 2023. The stock rallied up to 80. And then what happened? It started to consolidate. It started to sell back off. It started to drop down $45, $46, where in my opinion, it should be. This stock should be around like $50 and change based on the numbers that we just looked at. But then what happens? Well, we had our June and July rally. So now that pumps it to the next leg higher here, $115. And then it immediately sells off and gives back almost half of it. And now it's sitting here just bouncing around 70 and change for several, several months. And then what happens? Well, we had the November and December rally. So then that explodes the stock up to almost $190. So because of two random market pumps, the stock has rallied from this point about 200%. Crazy, in my opinion. Crazy. And looking at the chart here, look, I just want to show you these trend lines here. Going from the top of this candle here, date of inception, uh, Wednesday, April 14th, 2021, connecting to, I believe it's November 8th of 2021, drawing that trend line across. That's why when I saw the rally, I threw this price target up here. Because, again, if you guys are insisting on pumping this stock up, in my opinion, it doesn't deserve it. But if you guys are insisting on pumping this stock up, then I guess the traders are taking this to 200 plus potentially in the short term before they try to uh, bring it back down here to this support trend line. This support trend line, just for point of reference, this is the candle here, January 6, 2023, bottom of that candle, connecting to the bottom of that candle. Where is it? January, uh, June 6th, excuse me, June 6th, 2023. So that, in my opinion, looks like our support trend line now. You can see we bounced off of it and continued to step higher. But uh, again, I'm, I'm not understanding it. I am not understanding it. And, and this is the scary part between trading and investing. Because if you were involved in these pumps as a trader, congratulations. I'm very happy for you. I, I am glad that you saw the technicals, you saw you saw the bullish momentum, you jumped in, you made yourself money. I, I am so, so happy for you. When we're talking about on the investment side, this stock, in my opinion, does not deserve to be even be on your watch list. This is a company that looks to be dwindling away. Or or again, we looked at the forecast. For the revenue going into 2025, 2026, apparently it's going to stagnate for the next three years. So if if revenue is going to flatten out for the next three, four years, what is your urgency to own shares of this company? You understand what I'm saying? So in my opinion, I'm, I'm just not seeing it. I am not seeing it at all. But now we pumped up and then we had these big chunks down and now you can see we're kind of bouncing around in this in this range here. So now this is our potential flag with our post here. So now we have a potential bear flag situation taking place, meaning that the stock's probably going to drop down to like here, like the 130s, 135, 129 area, 130 and a half. Right. It's going to break below that moving average. That's going to help accelerate the sell off. And then again, it's, you know, it'll probably pull back there to like 107 or something like that. Looking at 
the the last kind of consolidation area so again the the hype of bitcoin climbing you know could, could it go up yeah i i guess uh, after this massive run, looking at the crappy numbers that we see with a potential bear flag setting up, you know, in, in my opinion, it should come down. And I, and I know you might say I'm crazy, but yeah, here, like, yeah, going into these earnings, yeah, believe it or not, this stock should come back down at some point and retest this, this resistance line here. And again, when these numbers come out, they might beat potentially but again they may have the potential to miss on the yearly revenue number of i believe it was 2.93 billion so even if they beat here if they come in light for 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 the fiscal year then it may potentially break and drop back down into the 70s here so of course only time will tell and i'm sure a lot of people may own this and may still be bullish on it and again, if they're holding like a crap ton of Bitcoin themselves, please let us know down in the comments section. Because again, I, I tried looking. I couldn't find it specifically with a recent date. Anyway, I found articles back from like 2022 and stuff like right after the company went public. But again, I saw another article saying that they're holding like 5% of the world's Bitcoin in their wallets. And again, that's great. But they don't make money off of that. That is not their Bitcoin. That is your Bitcoin. And they only make money off of your Bitcoin when you sell your Bitcoin. So that's why, in my opinion, just, just looking at this whole scenario, uh, in my eyes, it's just not adding up. And if this wasn't a crypto tech stock that was listed on the NASDAQ, it would not have received this rally. And it either would have remained flat down here in the, in the 50 to 70 range, or it would have potentially even dropped off even more. And like I always say, random ad, like I always say, if you agree, let me know in the comment section. If you disagree and I missed something, let me know, let us know down in the comment section. Because again, I do not claim to be a genius. I'm just looking at the information that is here. And, uh, you know, I'm just giving out my opinion. But switching over here to stock charts, you can see, look at this massive freaking rally. The market went on an absolute run again, as I mentioned, in my opinion, ridiculous overreaction and now everything's pulling back in january when historically everything usually goes higher look at the rsi on this on the daily maintained above 70 for looks like about six straight weeks right that look at how many stocks we looked at where as soon as the rsi benchmark is hit and it goes 71 72.4 as soon as it gets up there all of a sudden the stock reverses and starts selling off for a couple of days comes back down to earth not coinbase though not coinbase coinbase maintains a daily rsi north of 70 for it looks like about six straight weeks which is just unheard of and now the stock starts chunking down here we dropped about 10 percent, and now we have a potential bear flag forming and we have multiple rejections off of our mid bollinger band what grinds my gears too is uh about like 10 days ago when we were like here i actually made this video with the same vibe the same tone and it was it was very long it was like 45 50 minutes long and i was like no one's going to want to watch that forget it i'll re-record it in a couple of days or something like that and it turned out that again i was I, it looks like here in the immediate short term i was right anyway from a trading perspective but again also from the investing perspective you know a stock like this uh in my opinion isn't worth 180 190 dollars per share no way if i can get it for half that in my opinion maybe i'd consider it here at these levels absolutely not but as you see here again the stock rejected finally started to come back down to earth and now we have potential bear flag multiple rejections off mid bollinger band showing us that the next step down may be potentially around 134 dollars per share and again if we look here right if we go to the top of this candle 134.33 right there right there see it at the top of the screen the o the h the l the c the open the high the low the close the high 134.33 so in my opinion that's where it should go after it breaks out of this bear flag and drops below the 20-day moving average and as you see there that is only about a quarter of a point above the bottom bollinger band there on the daily so that's why i'm in, in my opinion i i think the run is over 
But of course, it depends what Bitcoin does, right? Because Bitcoin all of a sudden starts running again, you know, a coin may start running again for no reason, in my opinion. But as you see here, basically, right when the ball dropped, the MACD crossed to the downside, and it's been volatile. It's been selling off ever since. RSI on the week, on the daily, uh, sitting here at about 52 and a half. But of course, as we just saw where it came from, uh, the RSI definitely cannot be a leading indicator, in my opinion, especially when we're talking about coin. Uh, as you see here on the weekly, I mean, look at this MACD just absolutely on a tear here, going to the moon. And the RSI here on the weekly, about 68 and three quarters. But again, even here, you can see on the weekly, several, several weeks, the stock was massively above that 70 RSI benchmark, and it didn't even matter. Everything just started to sell off and pull back. So we can check the pivot points here. Of course, I'm recording a video. People are going nuts in Discord as I'm doing this, which is fine, but I apologize for those beeps. As you see here on the weekly, Looking like next pivot point down to 130.95. I don't think it climbs up to that resistance of 230. However, again, in my opinion, I didn't agree with any of that move. So who knows? But as we see here also, not only have we been consistently rejecting off of the mid Bollinger Band, but also here we've been rejecting off of this uh, mid pivot point here of 162.40. So again, as we see, support level, if we do drop down and break out of this bear flag, 137.40. So this is why I'm saying, in my opinion, I think it's going to drop down into the 130s. Then I would actually be patient, keep an eye on it, see how it reacts, because I think it actually takes another leg lower to the lower 100s after that. But overall, in my opinion, like, like, we, like the saying goes, men lie, women lie, numbers do not lie. And the numbers in Coinbase, while a couple of them are increasing, we see certain um, certain numbers like the operating margin percentage completely fell off a cliff and the revenue has dropped down significantly from where it was and apparently looks to basically stagnate over the next three, four years. So again, in my opinion, I really don't see any urgency or any value personally to own coin. But like I always say, if there's something I missed, something I don't know, or just in general, if you disagree and think that the company is worth owning and will be good over the years, give your opinion down in the comment section. I welcome all views, all opinions, doesn't matter. But I'm going to end it there. So once again, some stocks by the numbers. I want to thank you guys for stopping by. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, drop it down in the comment section. I'm usually very quick to reply. Thumbs up algorithm helps me get more eyes on the channel. And of course, subscribe to the channel if you have not. That is our handshake agreement. I'll do videos like this. I'll try to update you guys when I can. Uh, Discord link in the description of every video. Free Discord. You guys can come in. You can talk about stocks. You can talk about sports, whatever you want to do. Uh, I'll do all of that for you guys. All I ask, do me a favor. Push the subscribe button. <clears throat> that is how you help me help you. But more importantly, moving forward, like I always say, I understand that markets are rocky and volatile and uncertain. I want to wish all of you success. I hope everyone makes a couple of dollars. Thanks for stopping by. Have a good day.